Okay, so first let's review what a GPU actually is. We'll look at the original purpose and history of the GPU, then we'll look at why we would actually want to develop programs for the GPU. We'll also look at the architectural differences between the GPU and the CPU, and lastly we'll determine what we'd want to take when we would want to take advantage of the GPU. So most people already know this information, but we'll go over it just the same. GPU stands for Graphical Processing Unit. It was initially designed to accelerate the memory intensive work of the texture mapping and rendering of polygons, which would then be displayed on the user's computer screen. So in other words, you draw your polygons right here, and then you'd map, and then you would map the textures to them, allowing them to resemble objects known to humans in the physical realm. So the transistors, which are the working pieces inside the GPU, are mainly used to do calculations related to the computer graphics. Just back in 2006, which was just about six years ago, the uh, NVIDIA released CUDA 1.0, which has allowed programmers to access the GPU computing capabilities. What this means is that typical higher level programmers could now create programs which could run on the GPU. This evolution of evolution in GPUs allowing a wider range of programmers to program on the GPU has continued to add flexibility to GPU usage. And with this new, now somewhat easy to access computing capabilities, many engineers and scientists are starting to look into using the GPU for non-graphical calculations. So now that you know the very basics about GPUs and its capabilities, the next question one might ask themselves is, why would I want to program on a GPU? So, so one might say, I've been programming on a CPU for years without a problem, and if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? This is true, however, researchers are predicting a break if the processing power and capabilities of computers don't keep up with software demands. The user interface complexity in commercial business and software continues to increase. The software continues to get more complex. Just take, for example, Microsoft Office 2010. The most apparent change seemed to be use the user interface. This inter user interface I thought was a lot better than the old user interface. You use graphics and symbols uh, instead of just text to help people understand uh, where everything was in the menu. The mo uh, so this was developed to take to make the learning curve for newbies shorter and increase the human user understanding of the tool interface. Unfortunately, these enhancements don't come without a price. The need for which is the need for increased processing power. Now, the Microsoft updates aren't nearly uh, as in processor intensive as some of the software that you'll find in the research uh, development community today. There is a need and desire for increased fidelity by scientific and financial researchers and engineers for analysis of the physical and financial world in which we live. These types of tasks require massive computational power, which either makes running these programs expensive, slow, or both expensive and slow. And then many of the times, we don't even have the hardware capabilities to run the types of analysis needed or desired for these fields of studies. So you just got to wait for the uh, computational powers to catch up with what you actually want to do. So how do we keep up with these demands? Well, if we look around, we'll see that in many machines, the GPUs are more efficient than the CPU, that we'll see that the GPU sits idle, we'll see that the GPU sits idle while the CPU does all the work. The GPUs are more efficient than the CPUs in certain processes and programs that take advantage of parallel programming. So, due to everything mentioned above, once the GPU programming languages came about, the, came along, people began to offload the work they once forced the CPU to do over onto the GPU. 
Now there is one caution we should talk about before we go any further. If you ever do any amount of research on the future of GPU and CPU computing, you'll find a number of articles which attempt to compare the GPU and CPU capabilities. Unfortunately, this is a very unfair comparison due to the fact that they each have different purposes. The CPU has a much broader use and achieves good performance on a wide variety of workloads. The CPU cores themselves actually are much faster than C the GPU cores. On the other hand, the GPU is very has a very specific use so it can maximize its architecture for that one single use, which is doing arithmetic and arithmetic uh, computations. It also has dozens of cores compared to the CPU's simple eight four or eight cores. So you'll find another thing that you'll find is a great ambiguity between the research results. Different GPUs and CPU speeds have been measured to be somewhere between 2.5 times faster to 100 times faster. And this is a great range of uh, in the research results. And these differences could be due to the quality of code uh, and have actually nothing to do with the hardware. Uh, it could also do with what algorithms are being tested. Therefore, it's really important to read multiple research results and get a clear picture about uh, GPU uh, capabilities. So now let's go one step further and talk a bit more about the actual differences in GPU and CPU architecture. Now by looking at this graphic, you can see that GPU has many cores, many ALUs, arithmetic logic units, many more arithmetic logic logic units than the CPU. The ALUs are the sections of processors which take care of the arithmetic and logical operations. That's the green part right here. This is actually what gives the GPU the capability to just absolutely excel at parallel processing. If you uh, look at the table, you'll also see some differences, other differences between GPU and CPU. So for the cores, the GPU, CPU has around four processors where the GPUs usually have, or cores, I'm sorry, where the GPU has several dozen cores. The CPU is optimized for very extremely rapid sequential processes, whereas the GPU is optimized for doing and excelling at parallel or concurrent operations. For the CPU, transistors are mainly used for uh, more for the flow control and data caching, whereas for the GPU transistors are used more for data processing. Uh, for the core speed, the CPU core speed is a lot faster than the GPU's. Core speed typically runs uh, in the order of magnitude of gigahertz, whereas the GPU only runs uh, at megahertz. Currently you will start to see GPU's core speeds of 1 gigahertz, 1.5 gigahertz, but the CPUs are still faster, going about 3 gigahertz or higher. So what's the takeaway from all of this? The GPU should be thought of as a supplement, not a replacement for the CPU. Our goal as programmers really should be to make wise decisions as to when to take advantage of the GPU's power, to help the GPU and the CPU work together as effectively and efficiently as possible. Okay, and what's supposed to be portrayed in this picture is that you can think of the CPU as this one really big powerful person who is pulling a task. And then there's a GPU, you have a lot of littler, weaker people all simultaneously pulling a task. Then you ask yourself, well, which one's going to win if they're both pulling these? Who's going to pass the finish line faster? Well, it really depends on what is in this box, what the task is. You have to actually pick apart the task, try to figure out what all is involved in that task, and then, and only then, can you determine whether it would run better on a CPU or the GPU. Okay, now before we get into anything else, I would like to take a short sidestep to talk about parallelism. In this slide right here, 